Hey guys, on this episode of DePraw Power Skating, I'm gonna teach you how to be faster and more efficient with a Sharpie and a roll of tape. Coming up next. This is the very first episode, episode number one of Dupra Power Skating. So you can say that you saw it first, you subscribed first, and the best part is, it's not like those people that read the books and then compare it to the movie and say the book was so much better. There is no book. This is it. This is all you have to watch. So I'm gonna show you today for how about five bucks how you can be faster and more efficient out on the ice from the comfort of your own home. You'll see in a lot of my videos at Dupra Training Studios, we use the living room, the bonus room, and the garage, because that's normally where you're at training at the house, and we wanna make sure that you can use anything that you find around the house to be a better hockey player. So a trick I learned a long, long time ago from my dad when I started playing hockey was if you wanna survive on the ice, you better be fast and tougher than everybody else out there. This is one trick that I started at a very young age that is just all about technique and being efficient. All you do is you take your roll of hockey tape, you lay a straight line down on your floor, and then you want a forward V for your feet for starting position. Heels together, toes rotated out, knees rotated out, and hips rotated out. So when you start in the forward V, you keep all of your weight on your glide leg and you're going to stride out full extension, lock your thigh, extend calf, extend the toe, toe punch at the end, and then take your Sharpie and mark how far you've gone. After you have that mark, repeat the same process. The other side, glide leg remains underneath, rotate out full extension all the way down through the toe and make your mark. So you're probably saying, Ryan, how does this work for short players? I'm glad you asked. Spending a lifetime under five foot eight, I've had to learn how to be more powerful and quicker than the big guys. And if you're a big guy and you're tall and you have the stride length, how can you use this exact same drill to benefit you? I'm gonna talk about both next. So we've always been told to have that deep, deep knee bend. Now you can't be completely down in a 90 degree, it's impossible to skate this low. But just shy of it, the lower you get, the more power you can drive from your thighs, and the lower you get, the further you can extend your stride leg. So if you're a short player, you have to get really low to get as efficient and as much stride length as you can. If you're a taller player, you should still be getting down in that deep knee bend to access the power in your thighs and you'll have an even longer stride out to the side. At the end of the day, the more ice that you're pushing on, on each side adds up and you've covered more ice, which makes you a faster player. So coach, how do you know when you're down low enough? When your thighs are burning like crazy, that's a hint, but you gotta stay in that position to build the muscle memory. You don't build a muscle memory until you can keep your muscles under stress in a position for an extended amount of time and hundreds and hundreds of repetitions. So right about now, yeah, it's getting there. Then you need to start walking through your stride, hold the position, make sure you're hitting your mark and your sharpie mark, and back in. Don't extend too much to where you start losing your glide leg. Always keep it underneath of you and also make sure not to lay down the inside of your skate where you're hitting boot. You wanna stay on your steel and return. And then get in a rhythm and walk through just like this. 
When you're done, you don't think you can take anymore, do five more repetitions, then stand up and shake them out. I had the opportunity to sit with Tom Dunnan, the owner of the Carolina Hurricanes, and he brought up, Coach, I understand you can make a lot of gains with younger players and players that are still developing, but what if you had Ovechkin on your team? How are you going to help someone like that that's putting the puck in the net 60 goals a year? How are you ever going to affect them when they know how to play, they know how to skate? And I simply said, Mr. Dunnan, I might not be able to make them a ton faster, but this simple drill right here, even if it picks up inches on each stride, in the third period, when everybody starts running out of gas, he'll be a more efficient player. That said, this drill alone will help you pick up inches, it will help you increase your speed, and at very least, it'll make you a more efficient player in the third period. At the end of the day, this is a pure technique drill that builds excellent muscle memory from the comfort of your own home. But remember, to be an explosive hockey player and an explosive skater, you have to have four things. You have to be explosive, skate with power in every push and stride, you have to maximize your foot speed, and you have to have amazing technique. Put all those together, and you have a weapon out on the ice. Make sure to use all this free time that you have to kill the quads. In the words of the late, great Herb Brooks, legs feed the wolf, and that's the truth. You should be quadzilla in the gym. The stronger you are here, the stronger the skater you're going to be out on the ice. Thanks for watching the very first episode. I hope you stick around for more. Make sure to hit the like button and also smash subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them down below. This is Duprah Power Skating, episode one. We'll see you next time.